I'm Karim Rashid and I'm a designer and I uh, live in New York. I've been designing about, I guess, 35 years now and uh, inspiration for me is, is always there, meaning that I'm inspired by observing the world around me and uh, looking at social behaviours and the way we live in this world at this moment in time. And I'm also s uh, very inspired by technologies, production methods, how you make things, how you produce things. Anytime I see a machine in a factory, I just think of its potential and what it could do. Um, I'm very inspired by new materials, always. Uh, very inspired by the digital age, the age we live in now, because I'm always thinking about how interesting it is and seductive and, uh, and uh, communicative it is. And I always think about the physical world, if it could resonate or be the same and as inspiring as the digital age. Uh, I think I'm just inspired by this notion of trying to make the world a little better than it is, meaning that I observe around me a lot of times problems or issues with what we've created, so I try to think about how, imp how I can improve them, really. There, there, you know, there's, there's so many books. I, when I was an associate professor for about 12 years, I used to make my students read a lot of books. Victor Papadek, who wrote Design for the Real World, and it was uh, really about designing for third world and trying to elevate, let's say, the global uh, condition to make the whole world better. And then there were many, many other people. Um, uh, Daniel Pink, who wrote many good books, I would I used to recommend a lot of them. Um, Peter Dormer, who was a critic, very good critic. And then The Art of Everyday Things by Norman um, was a, is, a, is a great book for designers to read, actually. Uh, but there's a, there's a lot out there to read. <laughs> and I think, I think it's important to read as a designer because we tend to go to university or college and we immediately fall into learning about technologies or processes or developing products but we forget the important, let's say, more sociological aspect of what we do. And reading is very inspirational. And you're better off to read something to be inspired than you are to see something to be inspired. Because if you see something that inspires you, there's a good chance you'll be derivative or you know, you're, you're appropriating what you see. The danger in the digital age we live in now is somebody's going to design a stool, let's say, and they Google image stools. And once you look at 300 stools, there's a good chance you won't have an original idea. But it would be better to read about, I don't know, about, let's say, interaction of, of how people congregate in bars or restaurants, and maybe that will inspire you for a new stool and an original idea. I think what makes my office unique is the fact that it's very global uh, because you know, I think being based in New York City, which is probably one of, outside of London, let's say, the most globalized cities in the world and the most multicultural cities, is that everybody at some point feels like they need to go to New York for a moment or a time and see it. And in turn, we get a lot of interns and apprentices come in our office and a lot of our employees are from all over the world. And I think even now, with let's say 15 people we have, probably only two or three or four are Americans and the rest are very, very diverse. And we've probably had at least 40 different cultures in and out of the office um, perpetually. And that works well with me too, because I'm working globally. And in fact, more of my work is outside of America than it is in America. So it's always very nice to have a designer in the office who speaks the language of a client. So if it's Russian or it's Korean or it's Japanese or it's French or Italian, that there's somebody in the office that is uh, good at communicating. Well, that's. That's a difficult question to answer. And I'll, t I'll tell you why. Um, first of all, because my, the scale of the work I do is very different. So if I'm designing jewelry, it's very different than designing a mobile phone, which is in turn is different than a f piece of furniture, in turn different than an interior, in turn different than a building, you know? So the process is, I think, forever changing. Um, but in general, it's probably quite a conventional one, like most designers, where I start out sketching a lot uh, to absorb um, my thoughts, let's say, on the project and the client and what, we're, what I'm kind of hoping to accomplish. And then that moves, let's say, to, to my office where I sit with my team 
and then we start to expand on my sketches and expand on the ideas and of course we go digital very very quickly uh, because today I think digital has uh, superseded drawing, sketching. And in the analog age when I drew a lot, you could draw, if you draw very realistically, you could capture a lot to, to explain or communicate your idea to the client or to whoever. But today I find almost frustrating that I can never draw like what the computer can produce. So it's, it's, it's better to go to um, the digital very quickly, you know. But generally that's the methodology, let's say, of, of, of getting from, you know, just a creative idea in my head out to, uh, to manifest it, to get it into the world. Uh, my philosophy is that uh, to add to this world, we need to subtract. An addition by subtraction is, is my philosophy. In other words, if you design something really smart, great, inspiring, functional, there's a good chance that it will replace three or four items in the market. In other words, the more we put out better things, it's a way that we can take away all the, all the bad design, let's say. So one good design could remove three bad designs. You know? So my philosophy in a way is this notion, at least now, is a dematerialization, is to just have less in the world, but better. And it's a, it's a big challenge, you know, because you really, every time you get a project, you really um, need to improve what the status quo of, the, of that archetype is. And that's also getting harder and harder to do. So, you know, if you, if you get a project like piece of furniture, is the furniture you're designing and producing and putting on the market better or have some nuance of originality, something different than what's on the market? And I, my, my feeling is, my philosophy is, if it doesn't, it really doesn't need to exist. Because everything in this world that we now manifest should have some betterment of experience, make our lives better.